EVs may be the talk of the town these days, let's not forget that ICE cars can still be really fun to drive and they don't necessarily lose out in tech. So what I have here today is the Cherry Omoda 5, which is the most hyped B-segment SUV in Malaysia. And meanwhile, it is also one of the most controversial cars to talk about in Malaysia. But despite the controversies that's going on about this car, and let's not talk about that for now, how does the Omoda 5 fare during my one-week test drive? Let's find out in today's video. <laughs> Personally, I think the Cherry Omoda 5 is a really striking car to look at. The grille design is pretty subjective and I have to admit that it can trigger trypophobia in some people. But it is definitely one way that this car grabs attention on the road and it is unmistakably an Omoda. I love the sporty red color accents on the side mirror, skirting and even the rims. Combined with the two-tone color chassis, this car definitely makes me feel younger when I'm flexing off to my friends. The car also puts on an impressive light show when you unlock the car. There's even a projector floodlight that shows the Omoda branding. And speaking of unlocking the car, there's no need to press any buttons as it senses your presence with the key fob when you go near it. And it automatically locks when you walk away, which I totally love and it's super convenient. Enter the cabin of the Cherry Omoda 5, you'll be greeted by a very posh and impressive interior that doesn't make you feel that you're driving a Cherry. And may I say, it actually shames many similar price segment cars. Now first of all, it has electric Fox Ladder semi bucket seats, which is on the front passenger and the driver seats as well. So it's all electronic control, which I think is really cool. And you get the soft plastic dashboard, which I think uh, is nicer than cheap hard plastic and look at the side panels here this is a really nice hairline finishing that makes the car really really premium and you get a nice door handle as well so let's open the door and you close it sure that thumb this is a very solid thumb that you don't usually get on cars under 120,000 ringgit because you usually hear that milo tin slam which doesn't feel very nice at all you also get a panoramic sunroof right here though it's not necessary for malaysian cars and all that but this car offers a panoramic sunroof and considering this is a ckd model it's just impressive that cherry decides to include this right so i i am pretty impressed that it has this manual cover which i think is good because less electronic components and all that so you know less damages and you just close it if you want to now um you even get rgb lighting in this car as well which synchronizes with the driving mode and the rhythm of your music when you're playing some music there and despite all this cool interior and all that um i don't like this glossy piano black interface because it gets scratched easily it gets dust as well and you know what you get capacitive control buttons on the air conditioning which i think is something that i don't prefer i personally prefer physical buttons and knobs and all that i'm pretty old school but yeah you get you get the hang of it after some time but still when you gotta tap this all the time sometimes you can just tap on the wrong button which is some which is the reason why i don't like that now you also get this very impressive panoramic panel that houses two 10.25 inch displays one for the digital instrument cluster and one is for the infotainment system and as you can see when sunshine is shining in it is still very visible and i love that the fonts are so readable that you know it doesn't cost any you know ocd in you like why is this font so weird and all that the fonts look really clean and it's very readable overall it's a great experience but then i'll save more uh, on the infotainment system for the later part of this review As a B-segment crossover SUV, you might think that this is more of a driver's car rather than a passenger car. But quite the contrary, it can be very comfortable if you are not as tall or big size. Now, let's sit on the back here. So, as you can see, there's ample leg room for me. I am 5 feet 5 inch tall, not the tallest Asian nor the fattest Asian out there. And I feel very comfortable sitting at the back here, even though these seats cannot be reclined, which is a shame. I mean, it's a small SUV. You definitely don't expect that. But one thing that I do have some complaints is the headroom here, because even as a 5 feet 5 inch tall person, I feel that the headroom is kind of limited here. So if you were to go through some bumps really quickly, your rear passengers are sure to knock the roof. You know, I mean, you, you know the feeling, right? I mean, Malaysia 
I spray the big bumps and all that and once you go through that you'll definitely jump on the back and imagine ferrying those super large size or tall persons in this car it just doesn't cut it now you also get rear air conditioning right over here which is actually good for passengers and it's rather rare for a B segment car to have this kind of treatment here you also get a USB a port for charging which is convenient if you want to charge your phone on the back now speaking of the front seats here even though they are really nice semi bucket i kind of feel that they are quite small look at this sitting surface it just doesn't feel quite as big so if you are a person with large ties and all that you might not feel comfortable seeing that but, but as for me like i said i'm not the fattest asian out there it actually fits me very well and look at it next one is six really really good the Cherry Omoda 5 has very reasonable and practical storage compartments. Now starting from this glove box here, where you just simply press a button to open it up. Now what I'm impressed here is not only just this space, but it is also an air-conditioned storage compartment. So imagine if you are going on a long journey, you can put canned drinks right inside here to get it chilled. This is where the aircon vents are, so it blows cold air inside so that things that store inside will be chilled, which is like super, super cool. Now, you also get this slanting pad over here, which on the left is a Qi wireless charging pad. So if you put like an iPhone, it charges like at five watts, I guess. And on the right side, um, unfortunately, this is not another Qi wireless charging pad, but rather you can put your keys and everything here. Now, I really love this slanting position because you can really just check your phone's notifications by just simply tapping on it and just browse through it instead of just picking up your phone. It's a really nice ergonomic position that you can view your phone easily, but of course, drive safe on the road. Now, on the bottom of this panel, you get a, an extra storage compartment to put some other stuff such as keys, cards and smart text or whatsoever and the glove box is also pretty reasonably sized as well look at this glove box i think you can put some amount of stuff inside here without feeling limited next let's talk about the tech stuff in the omoda 5. like most chinese made cars the cherry omoda 5's in-car tech is nothing short of impressive the 10.25-inch infotainment system is an Android-based system and supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. But interestingly, only wireless Android Auto is supported and it works way better than wired Apple CarPlay with smoother transitions. Apple CarPlay feels a tad bit choppy, which is something I don't expect even though it works fine throughout my test drive period. Also, what's odd is that the Omoda 5 still uses a USB-A port for smartphone connectivity, and a USB-C port can only charge your phone. Since the car is originally made for the left-hand drive market, Cherry seems to have forgotten to switch the USB ports to the right, which can be inconvenient for the driver if you want to connect your phone. Aside from the location of the USB ports, one more thing to nitpick is the steering wheel controls. Now, I know it might not be a big deal for most people out there and it's all about getting used to, but I would have preferred if Cherry switched the music controls on the right to the left side because since the infotainment system is on the left side here, it would make more sense to have music controls on the left side rather on the right as I frequently accidentally press this side of the buttons which actually controls the instrument cluster. I mean, since the car is already assembled locally, I don't see why Cherry couldn't do a switch between these two sides of buttons. The Android-based infotainment system is paired to a decent 8-speaker Sony sound system. The UI has very smooth transitions and there's three different themes you can choose that syncs with the digital instrument cluster. It can receive OTA system updates, which is great if Cherry ever issues one in the future. It can also play videos while the car is on the move, which I think is great if you are an attentive driver and want to entertain your passengers when driving on a long road trip. The Omoda 5 comes with a suite of ADAS and an excellent 360 camera system that's super useful for driving around tight corners. I love how the warning chimes don't sound as scary if they are being triggered, but like most ADAS, there's bound to be one annoying feature and in the case of the Omoda 5, it is the emergency lane keeping feature. Because even when I'm driving perfectly fine on the straight lane or making a slight turn at corners, it can be too sensitive at times and autonomously steers me back into place. You will also need to disable the feature every time you drive in the vehicle settings. 
The car's 360 degree camera system are always at work as you drive, which is the reason why you can see that it recognizes cars and trucks on the digital instrument cluster for collision and blind spot prevention. Though it isn't perfect like you see on a Tesla. Under the hood, the Cherry Omoda 5 is powered by a 4-cylinder 1.5-litre turbocharged engine that outputs 156 horsepower and 230 newton meters of torque, which matches the base model of the Proton X50 in terms of power output but weaker than the flagship variant. And by all means, even though it has a slightly weaker output, this doesn't mean that it is a slow car, it can still drive very fast. This engine is paired to a 9-speed CVD transmission, which, to be honest, I'm very impressed with it because most of the time when you hear the term CVT, you will actually uh, think about laggy gear shifts and all that, but this doesn't happen at all on the Cherry Omoda 5 because the gear shift is very responsive and even though on the instrument cluster you don't see like D1, D2 to D9 and you know, it, it just feels really smooth as a CVT transmission and I thought I was driving a DCT transmission car I mean by all means I, I drive a car with DCD transmission but yeah it is very impressive when it comes to that now of course the one thing that you might just be a little concerned is the rev noise personally I find it I find the revving to be a little too high when uh, you are you're pressing the throttle from the starting line it gets really loud but you know it's kind of acceptable um, I'm just going to do a straight road and I'm going to do that for you guys to hear right so we are now on a straight road already I'm going to start ramping Hear that it easily goes up to 5,000 RPM and and all that. Yeah, but it's the it's the way I drive it. I'm a heavy heavy footer, so obviously you are going to hear this kind of rev once you once you do that on highways and all. But yeah, it's something to get used to because uh, I've been driving a, a 1.6 turbo car with DCT, and this is not something that I'm expecting. But I have to say the gear shift is really really smooth for this car. Now in terms of MVH. The car handles that very well. Uh, on highways, if you're traveling at 130 km per hour or 140 km per hour, you really don't find any wind friction noise coming into the car, unlike the Proton X50, which you can already hear wind noise coming into the cabin if you are driving at just 110 km per hour. So good job to Cherry for that. And even when the car is idle, you really don't find much vibration from the engine which is a really really good thing and something that we are looking at at modern cars today and speaking of the ride experience I have to say that the handling of this car is pretty out of my expectations it drives really well even at sharp corners and all that but the only thing I do recommend that you guys do is to set the steering mode to sport mode which can be done from the infotainment system because the steering feels more responsive when you're set to sport mode and it also feels more rigid. Now as you travel at high speed, the steering will obviously get a little heavier and more rigid which gives you really, really nice precise control and I think it's a really good thing that uh, Cherry has done all this. Good job to Cherry. Yeah, you really got to test drive this to find out more if you get a chance. Overall, I love the Cherry Omoda 5 for what it is. It has an excellent ride quality, a handsome look, and a really posh interior that you don't usually find on similar price segment cars. And Cherry Malaysia is so confident of the car that it is even offering a 7 year or 150,000 kilometer warranty and that is probably one of the longest that you find on any car brands right here. And if you're still not confident of the engine, they do even allow you to top up some extra cash to go for a 10 year unlimited mileage warranty which I think is a pretty bold move. It's just like how Google is promising up to 7 years of Android OS upgrades on their Pixel 8 phones and I think that is something that is a really great selling point. But as usual, you shouldn't be buying a product based on the manufacturer's commitment but simply just buy the car because you like the design, you like the features and it is the budget that you are comfortable paying with. However, like I said, the controversies of the car is still there, of course that is unavoidable. but like any products that you buy, like the phone or whatsoever, there's bound to be a ratio that has some minor issues and all that and it doesn't necessarily mean that when you buy this car, you immediately get a lemon unit. So if you were to think about it rationally, um, to be honest, it is something that you should disregard. I mean, all the controversies, the comments and all that. And you should definitely go check out this car if you really like what the 
you see inside here because by all means it's a really affordable car at just 108,000 ringgit and you really get things that you can't get on similar price segment cars. Alright, so that's pretty much about my thoughts on the Cherry Omoda 5. I really love this car. It's a great ride. So let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos and I'll see you in the next one.